Hey there YouTube, Superbrain AK here, and I've got a Klipsch Sub-10 here from a friend. He sent it to me to repair, and, well, get on the forum, start diagnosing it, and I can't figure out anything that is a common failure that people have know how to repair it. All the voltages are fine. The uh, Q5 is fine. They got the voltages on those two resistors of 5 volts. Uh, the forum link will be down below in case you want to uh, repair the one that you are probably watching this video for. So check the description for the forum link. Now mine, well my friends, doesn't have these same problems. Everything is fine, it just doesn't make a lot of sound. I've already tried replacing a couple of capacitors, checking resistors, and decided it was taking way too much time. So I figured it'd be best just to make it a passive subwoofer. So that's why it doesn't look quite right, because I've changed one of the high level inputs to be a passive in. So got this wire here going up to a knob sound 300 watt class D sub amplifier so you've got your it's the G2 Pro with on off and a little indicator switch light right there and then it has PBTL and sub which I assume this is just it doesn't use the low pass filter. I don't know what PBTL means. Probably something from the Chinese industry. But switch to sub, then you've got your sub frequency adjustment. And then you, of course, have your volume knob. Take a look at the back here. You got your RCA input. You have sub out, which I guess. It's just a low, low level output. And then you have your amplified speaker output. 300 watts RMS probably. Well actually that's probably peak. Because it's powered by either 24 to 35 volts. And what it comes with down here is a 35 volt 5 amp power supply. There you go. 32 volt 5 amp power supply. Made by knob sound. Interesting. So yeah. Figured it'd be a lot better to make it a passive subwoofer. That way, if I am able to fix this, it's not going to fail again. And they're going to have to get it repaired. Whereas if it's a passive subwoofer, they can replace this easy with, you know, maybe another amplifier that they already have. Or spend another $80 on Amazon. So, I'll put in a clip of it uh, making the world move. So, watch your volumes. And then, I'm going to take it apart and show you what I did to troubleshoot it. Stay tuned.
So, let's take it apart and I'll show you what I troubleshooted in the amplifier and then what I did to hopefully fix it. Alrighty, so here on the Klipsch community forum, we've got the sub 10 repair blog and over on page 9 is my post. So you can see you've got 86.8 on the main supply rail, 27.71 into the regulators, 5.55 volts between the big resistors, and the balance trim pots are 250 ohms. So there's just no sound. It was extremely quiet and doesn't didn't seem good. Didn't seem good. So there was definitely something really weird and wrong. So I've got all the voltages, it's just not amplifying properly. And then on the next page, I said I replaced C48, C58, C60, and C11. Those are all next to the uh, amplifier section. I'll show you that right now. Alrighty, so here is it taken apart. This is just the back of the thing there. It's a plate amplifier. And I'll show you. So the Q5 over here is a TO92. So this is a little bit of a later model where they replaced the surface mount. Um, and over here I replaced these two capacitors and these two capacitors. I'm trying to diagnose all the output bits. And I even connect audit, connected audio directly to pin it was either one or two from this side. One of them is uh, analog ground and the other is the input so whichever makes continuity to ground isn't the one you're looking for and then you've got plus and minus 15 volts on the other two and then a power ground I guess and so yeah still nothing connected directly here it's basically the same volume as if I crank the knob over here all the way up so I uh, couldn't figure it out. No one was able to really help me on the forum. They were just talking about their other stuff. So, you know, pulling the capacitors out, I didn't have to take this all apart. So, I did make sure to replace the thermal paste in case someone ever tries to use this again. I did what I could. So, my repair is connecting the speaker wires right here which normally connect to these two posts directly to these two posts. So these are the high level input wires. You can see them here. They actually, the inputs are here and then it goes to the outputs. So I disconnected those, uh, put some heat shrink over them and put some hot glue inside the heat shrink and then melted it down. So these are protected. And then I soldered some wires with some heat shrink onto the terminals, plus and minus. Got some spade connectors, connected it to there, and then put some heat shrink on so these won't wiggle loose at all. And the last thing I did was disconnect the input. Um, we got the uh, mains here that normally connects there disconnected put heat shrink with a little hot glue and tucked it up in here so if you did plug it in nothing would happen and I'm gonna leave the fuse in so yeah it's a mostly good amplifier it just doesn't work 
So hopefully you guys can get some help on the forum. I'm not able to tell you much about it. It's super weird. All those little transistors. It's got four different transistors there. Something there. Bunch of resistors. Conductor, capacitor. So yeah. That's my repair of it. Make it passive. Save somebody some headache in trying to diagnose whatever this bash nonsense is. So yeah. Good luck to you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.